Today you get to meet Advocate Capital client Matthew Wright. Well, if you're a plaintiff lawyer, you may be considering becoming a client of Advocate Capital. And to help you address some concerns or questions you might have, I've invited one of our clients to join us today, and his name is Matt Wright. Hey, Matt. Hey, Mike. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming down. I appreciate yeah. it. You know, being in Nashville together, we can meet in the studio and not have to do the remote. So it feels a lot more comfortable. Yeah, definitely. A little, don't have that pause. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. In fact, your office is about 10 minutes from my house. Yeah, which, we're just uh, right down in Franklin. Yeah, yeah, it's really, last time I was there it was snowing. It was November. So today it's, what, 92 or <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Things have changed quite a bit. So. Uh -huh. so thanks for being here because, you know, we talk to lawyers all across the country and they have some pretty common concerns and they're understandable concerns about, you know, what's it like to be an advocate client, you know, worries they might have. But Bef before we get to those specifically, though, can you talk a little bit about uh, what it was like at your practice before becoming our client and now what's it been like since you become a client? Yeah, so the biggest difference is in the cases that we handle, we're, we're very selective about the cases that we take. We're looking to take on the cases that where the client has suffered a, a, a significant loss, something has been taken from them, maybe their livelihood, maybe their ability to enjoy life, yeah. maybe they need lifetime medical care because mm -hmm. truck accidents are, are, for the most part, catastrophic. Mm -hmm. and they're, they're usually you know, involving an 80,000 pound truck versus mm -hmm. a passenger car. The truck always wins that. Right. And um, the difference in our practice is that we now don't have to consider whether we want to hire the best expert, whether we want to go hire someone to do a download that may cost several thousand dollars of the ECM. Um, and that doesn't in, impact our cash flow. Mm -hmm. And so you, you never want to be in a decision where, hey, I'm having to decide, uh, don't want to pay my staff or don't want to hire this expert. Mm -hmm. You know, those are considerations that are out of the equation right now. Yeah. And so we, could, we can go hire experts right off the bat and prosecute the case and do everything that's going to make a big difference to our client mm -hmm. that needs to be done. We, we don't second guess ourselves when we make that decision to get involved and spend money early in the case and to preserve the evidence and develop the right. case. Yeah, so like you, I'm a small business owner, and unlike the government, we can't print money in the basement. You know, we actually have to make payroll, and we have real-life uh, implications. And I don't think most people realize that one of the conversations that happens in small plaintiff law firms around the country is uh, payroll's next week. We need to hurry up and settle this case. Right. Or um, we, we, have a, we have bills to pay, and so that we're going to have to put off hiring that expert. Or we're going to hire the expert that's not quite as good but works on a contingent fee basis. Yeah. And, and who suffers when, uh, when a law firm is having conversations like that and you're taking into account maybe your own needs versus the needs of your client? Your client ultimately is the one that's paying the price for that. And I never want to be in that position. Yeah, exactly. And I, I want my client to get the best representation mm -hmm. that we can provide. And that means having a team of experts. It means having you know, trucking um, safety experts involved, accident reconstructionists, life care planners, doctors. The, you need a whole team mm -hmm. on your side and in your corner and, and having the uh, flexibility to do that mm -hmm. with Advocate Capital allows us to do that. And those are all expensive things, and their, their bills go up every year. So, so some uh, uh, lawyers watching this will be worried about adding borrowing costs to a case or being our client might negatively impact their client. What, what would you, what's your experience? It, it does the opposite, Mike, because here is why. When you are not having to deal with the considerations of running the law practice and financing your own law practice versus prosecuting your case and mm -hmm. putting money, their investments, investments mm -hmm. into your case and the outcome of your case, your client benefits from that. Mm -hmm. That results in bigger settlements. It results in being ready for trial, mm -hmm. keeping your trial dates. And, and being ready for trial is what really results in the best outcome for our clients. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so when you show the defense, and in our cases, it's usually excess carrier is going to make the final decision mm -hmm. as to whether they pay what your case is worth or whether they don't. Mm -hmm. If you're not ready for trial, you don't have your evidence lined up, you don't have your case themes um, uh, structured through your storyboards and through your experts and your testimony and, and f going out and finding the critical witnesses that mm -hmm. 
know what happened. Mm -hmm. They're not going to pay what your case is worth yeah. to your client. So yeah, it absolutely. makes a big difference. So there was a, a particular case that you had, and you went to extraordinary lengths you were telling me about on a particular case. Uh, can you tell me about yeah, that? Yeah, so it, it's a, it still is an active case. I can't really go into the details of what happened, but okay. to, to summarize it, I've got a case that does involve a commercial motor vehicle, which is a crane, which is one of my few cases that is not a trucking mm. accident case. Mm. And so... There was, a, there was a debate as to what caused the crane to fail. And so with the help of the advocate line, we were able to actually go find the exact model crane that was used that resulted in my client suffering catastrophic injuries. We found it at a dealership in Connecticut, purchased it. Wow. And then with the aid of the crane operators that we hired and the experts and the engineers, we were able to go in and actually reconstruct with a real crane the wow. incident and show exactly how it happened and wow. and it had not been clear uh, until that point and all all of it came together through that operation mm -hmm. and so that was something that probably before I had the advocate line I would have ha been hesitant to do because sure. it was a big commitment to purchase the crane uh, have it hauled from the dealer down to the site where we reconstructed the incident but I, I really didn't give it a second chance. And, and ultimately, my client, who is never going to be able to work at his job again in the same mm. capacity, mm. he's going to benefit from that. Right. Amazing. I don't think most people realize what an entrepreneurial uh, adventure it is to be a plaintiff lawyer. I can't imagine going out and buying a crane just for, for a case. But uh, that's what it takes sometimes. It does. And, and that really w was what it took to figure out exactly what happened mm -hmm. and without having the reassurance that we could you know continue to meet all our obligations that we have on a daily basis and finance all the cases we have yeah. it, that would have been a lot more difficult to do well matt thank you so much for being our customer for being here today uh, and for the important work that you and every plaintiff lawyer does to help uh, make the world a safer place we appreciate it thank you mike